Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for part two of the Color Blocked Suit Project. Indeed, I started this project last week by making the skirt for this ensemble. You can see that video here. I will put it in a card. So I made this rather strange hollow spandex and PK color blocked skirt last week with a side zipper. You can see that video here. Then today using the same fabrics and rather similar techniques, I'll be using my basic block pattern, transforming that into a color blocked jacket pattern and making the jacket to match. I'll show you the design I have in mind over on the blue patterning table of doom as always. All right, so today I'm starting with my bodice block pattern, my regular bodice block pattern. And I'm just going to go ahead and eliminate these darts through a princess seam line. I've added on an inch and a half to the center front here and I've traced my favorite neckline here. Uh, so I can use that same peaked neckline here on this jacket, but those are the only changes I've made so far. Oh, except for up here on the shoulder, I've added a tip up a quarter of an inch and a tip out a quarter of an inch at the tip of the shoulder, just so I can throw a shoulder pad into this jacket later on. So I'm catching you up here, but I'm going to draw a line from the apex up into the shoulder here and then separate this piece into a uh, princess seam line. And this is not the official way to do princess seams, which don't worry, we will be doing soon. Um, this is kind of the slapdash quick and quick and dirty princess seam situation, which again, always sounds too dirty, honestly. Let me cut along this neckline here, start cutting this out and cutting this apart. So we're gonna eliminate both of these darts and I'm gonna cut through that first dart leg through the apex and up through that line I drew into the shoulder, like so. Now I have my front piece and I can directly cut the rest of this out, honestly. And then I can cut this dart off. So I'm going to add seam allowance along this before I cut it off just because then I don't have to add it back on later. But I can cut the rest of that dart off, and you can see it's just been eliminated now. I'm going to go ahead and add a quarter of an inch along the side seam here, just because this is going to be worn over another shirt. You know, it's a jacket, so I just want to add a little bit of ease in there. And then I can close this other dart, like so, cutting to the apex and closing it. And just like that, we have basically a shoulder princess line. Um, again, this would need some refinement, and this is not, again, the totally the official way to do this. You would do a couple more steps. Um, you can see that on my channel in the... Uh, Luke Skywalker dress and also in my vest video if you want to see me do an official princess seam But it will be coming soon uh, an additional video all about princess seams will be coming soon to the channel But here I'm going to go ahead and add seam allowance along the rest of this Because anywhere of course that I cut my pattern apart and I want to sew it back together I'm going to need seam allowance uh, although we'll see that trip me up today So I'll show you where I go wrong with adding seam allowance today. Oops So let me just add seam allowance all along this piece just as it is, and then I'm going to slice off some of this because right now this would be a very pointy bust right here. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of like readjust this very pointy situation and cut some of it off. I'm like almost planning, you know, kind of here to cut off about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch at least from this pointy pointy curve. Just smooth this off a little bit, especially because this is a jacket. I don't need it to fit super closely around the bust. Um, I could probably have made it even smoother, honestly, especially because we're using weird latexy fabrics today that don't like curvy seams. But now that we have the side front with seam allowance, I need to go ahead and add seam allowance here onto the center front piece. So I'm going to tape on some spare paper here and draw seam allowance along this line, like so, again, half inch seam allowance. But again, this is a quick and dirty how do you do a princess seam. It, it's just eliminating the darts by cutting them away, and the same amount of fullness is taken away when you sew these two pieces together as would be taken away when the darts are there. So you can kind of see where those dart, two darts disappear to. You can see there's one up into the shoulder and one below the bust. But here I'm going to go ahead and extend this from the waist down and use my skirt pattern as a bit of a guide here. Line this up where it normally would line up in a dress. Just make sure everything's going okay here. Line up the center front of the skirt, basically. I'm just going to mark, you can see I'm marking this dart here. Um, as a way to extend this down with a proper angle. Ooh, I wish I knew how to explain that. Ooh, you can see what I did there, <laughs> but it doesn't make much sense, honestly, unless you're apparently have a weird geometric for pattern design brain like I do, evidently. How are you gonna explain these things later, kid? You need to think about that while you're doing it. Anyway, I'm gonna make this like seven inches down from the waist. So I'm just measuring that down from the waist here. And then I'll, I'll have to extend the, um, front overlap that I have going on here. Oh, seven and a half, excuse me, seven and a half, like so. And then again, I will need to add seam allowance to this little skirt extension portion here, like so. And I can go ahead, cut off the extra paper here. Again, I'm making this seven and a half thinking I want it to be seven inches from the waist down. Um, and that half inch is seam allowance at the hem, basically. So here's where we are so far. I'm going to draft a little skirt piece to go onto here as well. 
So let's tape that waist down for now. This would normally line up here at the end of this other dart. So this is how much skirt I have to fit into here. Now, if you imagine if you subtract that dart from there, uh, you know, we're kind of like uh, creating a double ended dart in here that doesn't exist. Hopefully that makes any sense. But I'm just like lining this up to where it kind of needs to be. Again, this is like not precision pattern drafting. This is very much uh, slapdash pattern drafting. But it's years of experience, meaning that I know what I'm doing, right? <clears throat> yeah, something like that. So I'm going to flare this out using the darts on the skirt as my guide. This is not a very good tutorial for this pattern. I am so sorry. Um, I'm realizing now. I mean, basically, I want to make these color blocking videos showing just basically how I cut my patterns apart. But today I have to modify the pattern quite a lot to get to a jacket pattern first before I can cut it into the color blocks. And this is where I'm struggling, apparently, to explain what the hecky doodle I am doing. Um, and this cur curve down here, again, I want to make this seven and a half inches long. Same as the front, like so. Um, curve off that hem and slice this apart. Again, in an ideal world, I would have mocked this up. I'm not going to because I have faith in me, which is nice of me. But, um, you know, <laughs> this is a little bit more advanced pattern drafting. I am actually going to keep the seam here just because I want to use some weird fabrics. I might want to color block the waist and the top differently. Um, so until I determine that, I'm going to go ahead and just cut them back apart. Now, of course, here's the problem with this. I don't need seam allowance there because I lined it up perfectly and the top and the bottom already have seam allowance on my cards uh, pieces. So I don't need seam allowance at this waistline. So I've just added that in there, which makes that piece too long. And we will discover what that does to the whole situation later. But I did not need seam allowance there. Oops, just, I mean, I'm used to when I cut the pattern apart, I need to add it. But when I put the pattern together, I did not uh, calculate the fact that it was involving seam allowance already. So um, that's where having seam allowance already on my block patterns, that's the only time I think that's tripped me up. I, I never really have had a problem with that before, but this time I added seam allowance between the waist on this front piece, like a goober. Oops. So that uh, was felt very fatal uh, when I later figure it out. And I'll show you the moment when I realized that. So I did go ahead and curve off the last inch and a half to create a little color blocked panel at the bottom of that side front. But I'm just, you know, super disappointed watching this back to watch myself put seam allowance at that waist of the side front because I don't need it there. Oops. <sighs> I should slow down, honestly. All right, here above where the bust is, I wanted to make sure this was out of the way of the bust seam itself. I put a stripe on the center front panel as well. Again, just like the stripes on the skirt last week, I'm just gonna cut this apart, add seam allowance to everything. And this piece wasn't even taped, so I need to re do the seam allowance for this little buddy. There we go, tape that back on, and then I can put seam allowance on this little chevroni stripe and on the top and bottom of this front piece as well. This is where I do need seam allowance, but alas, it's about time I made quite a fatal mistake here on the channel. It's been a little while. <laughs> All right, so there is my front. I have A, B, and C, and again, I'm gonna put some arrows on here so I know which way is up. Just to try and keep these things straight. Luckily, this all has the center front marked on it, so that helps. And here I have three panels so far. But let's see where this point comes to on this. It's like right under the bust, so I don't really want to mess with that too much. So I want to make sure I'm not like getting too close to the apex with any of these panels, just because having seams right over the apex is not very fun. Um, like having one seam over the apex is fine, but having multiple things meeting there, it's going to get bulky really quickly. So I'm trying to kind of avoid that. So I'll make this panel underneath and then I want to just grab the panel from the front so I can copy this angle that's what I'm doing here so I grab that front panel because I don't have a protractor sitting here I don't know what angle I ended up choosing so I'm going to decide my other angles here on the front kind of based off of that first one I drew so I'll like line up the seam allowance here and draw this in so that it has the same angle even though we're going in the opposite direction as the front piece all right so that's going to meet up there below the bust like so Trying to think, where exactly do I want to put these panels so that they don't interact with the apex? At least not too much. Yeah, let's come up another inch above the bust, kid. All right, so I'm just drawing those out. I'll have a like three inch wide stripe uh, where the apex will be encompassed in that wider stripe. And I can do that, hopefully, I think in the PK <laughs> so that it's um, a little bit easier to work with as opposed to the spandex, latex coated spandex weird stuff. Anyway, front A. Front B, 
front. Here I am drawing those little hat like hatch marks over the lines that I've chosen because sometimes I end up with extra lines and marker points. And I'm going to draw the grain line on there too. You can see I just drew a long red line just so I know what the grain line is. And you can see how this has like a double ended dart out of the middle of these pieces. And for some reason, I'm not seeing that I don't need seam allowance here. But, ouch, still hurts. I'll stop, I'll stop harping on it until we get to the point where it becomes a problem. Once again, once I've drawn my color blocked sections in, I need to cut these part, apart, stripes apart, and then I will add a seam allowance so they can all be sewn back together later. Like so. It's repetitive, but uh, quite easy, honestly. Drafting a jacket pattern, not the easiest, and I'm not good at explaining it. Uh, cutting a pattern apart to add color blocked, fine. Just draw the panels you like, cut them apart, add seam allowance, sew them back together, honestly. That part's easy. Okay, so now we have all these pieces for the side front. Ouch, that's a lot of pieces. And just three for the center front pieces. So we have the entire front of my jacket ready to go here. We'll set that all aside and we can start working on the back. I just need to raise my back neckline and then I raise that shoulder a quarter of an inch and out a quarter of an inch as well. Again, to put a shoulder pad in there later. Then I'm going to make this close along the center back. So I'm adding a half inch along my center back. Um, instead of having a zipper down the back of this, it's just going to have a center back seam like so. And once again, I've drawn a line from the point of the back dart up into the shoulder so I can separate this into a princess seam down the back as well. Of course, the fit on the back is a little bit easier to finagle because you're not actually working around the bust. And I'm using the side panel piece from the front as like a guide here again um, for the angle and also for how far it needs to come along the side so that the side seams will match, or at least they would match if again I hadn't accidentally added seam allowance where I didn't need it on the waist seam on the front. I said I wouldn't talk about it, but here I am. And I'm just, just going to start designing on my stripes down the back of this. Huh. Uh, some of them are two inches wide, some of them are one inch wide. I'm just deciding on a whim, you know. All the stripes down the back end up looking fun, uh, no matter how wide you make them. Like so. And again, I can just cut away my dart here. Boop, don't need that anymore. In order to sew these two back together, I will need seam allowance, however. So let's add that on. And the seam allowance all along that long, straight back princess seam before I start cutting these little bits apart, because it's just easier to add seam allowance in long strips than it is in tiny strips. Half the time doing these color block projects, I just spend <laughs> putting seam allowance on my pattern pieces. Now one could say, Bianca, just remember, d don't add seam allowance and then just remember to cut it with seam allowance when you cut it out. But no, no, I, I will not remember. So uh, I, there's that's like a guaranteed way for me to like feck up with my last bit of fabric and be sad. So um, I always add seam allowance to my patterns. I, there are people out there who never add seam allowance to their patterns and they always just remember to cut things out with like a buffer of seam allowance around them. I can't do that. I would have to completely like readjust how my brain works. And this old uh, cat is not learning that trick, all right? But once again, I'm gonna cut apart all my stripes down my center back piece here. And um, I do have seam allowance down that center back as well so that this can be like chevroned down the whole back like this. You'll see what that looks like in the end. The back actually is my favorite part of this project, for sure. The front I think could use a little bit of finagling, but the back I really like. But once again, cut all the color blocks, the blocks apart, and add seam allowance to all of them. Same with the side back as well. Although I have less blocking going on there, just because the center is so busy that we didn't need a ton happening in the side back. And the like kind of bottom of the jacket, like peplum, I guess, of the back is going to be completely separate this time. And I'll remember to not add seam allowance to my waist. See, you can see the waist pieces here, B6 there, and the back lower side. I did not add seam allowance to the waist because I don't need it. It's already inherent in the pattern, which is what I should have done in the front. Dang it. All right, like so. All right. Let me grab my front here, just so I can see what I'm looking at. Label that a little bit more. I'm just labeling which pieces are going to end up shiny or like specialty fabric and which pieces are not. Again, you could do this, you know, in different colors, like I did my colored PK dress. This time I'm just doing different textures. Color blocking or texture blocking. Is that, we can make a new term for <laughs> this. We can say that I invented it. Just kidding. I did, definitely did not. Um, but it's like using the same color fabric, black PK, black latex, 
or latex look holographic spandex weirdness. Um, so it's more blocking with texture than it is with color, but you can do either or both, you know? You could do a different color and texture, or do this whole thing where like it's all a very similar color of fabric but different textures is very fun as well. You could do something like this with a cotton sateen and a velvet, for example, which not that velvet's very fun to sew with, but it would be very cool to have like a color blocked situation, but in velvet. Here I'm creating a pencil skirt back, or like half of a pencil skirt back by tracing my pencil skirt back. And then instead of using each like two one inch darts, I'm just making one dart in the middle of the back that is two inches. So I'm just taking the amount of dart fullness I need on the back pattern and combining it into one dart, hopefully. If you've seen my um, corset waist butterick recent dress that I made here, where I do combine my darts into like double ended darts, this will make sense on how I'm doing this. Once again, I'm doing a terrible job explaining today. This is more of a watch me experiment with this as opposed to a tutorial today. Because of course, jacket making, as I'm always saying, I actually don't know how to tailor anything. Um, and jacket making is very new to me. So here I'm experimenting by doing some weird fabric-y color blocky ones. One day I'll experiment by doing proper tailoring. Um, but you're gonna have to bear with me as I learn, all right? I'm sorry. Here I'm going to cre create a stripe along the bottom of this because the pieces towards the waist I'm going to cut out of the shiny and then the pieces along the hem I wanted to be out of pique um, just because hemming things in pique is easier than hemming things in weird spandex. Not that I hem this because I'm gonna fully line this jacket out of some polyester lining that I was gifted. So thank you to Morgan out there for sending me fabric. Most excellent fabric really. Although so far I've only used the plain black lining which is not exciting, but is very useful. Again, I'm gonna have these skirt-ish peplumy pieces meet up with the fronts along a seam, along that princess seam. So I'm cutting this apart along the dart and eliminating the dart. And then of course I have to add seam allowance. Once again, with the adding of the seam allowance, I know. Let's not talk about how bad my hair looks this day. My bangs are going in all kinds of directions. If you have short bangs and you sleep, you know, you wake up and they go all kinds of different ways. And that's just the nature of having tiny bangs. I'm curving this a tiny bit so that it sticks out from the body a tiny bit in the back. I'm just adding a little bit of extra curve back here before I add the seam allowance on. That's about like an eighth of an inch in the center and then just tapered down to either side. Again, I don't have a good reason for doing that other than I felt like it at the time. Once again, where these stripes are, I'm going to cut them apart and add seam allowance. Anywhere there's a color blocked section, I do need to add seam allowance. The back, I added seam allowance everywhere I was supposed to and nowhere I wasn't supposed to. Because again, once again, look at these back skirt pieces. I have not added seam allowance to the top of them because it's already in there. Okay, time to start doing the sleeve. So I'm going to go ahead and trace my standard sleeve pattern here. You can see this sleeve get drafted or how I draft my sleeves like this in this video here that I will put in a card. But this is just a standard sleeve with an elbow dart, like so. Let me just cut that out. And I want to create this kind of like panel where this is split down the center of the like front and back of the arm. So I'm kind of just deciding three inches out from the center. I'll draw a line on the other side, three inches out from the center. I'll draw a line like so. Uh, my sleeve narrows a little bit, so so do these lines, but I'm just going to cut my sleeve basically into these different pieces. And this will help me eliminate the elbow dart in a moment here as well. Once again, I'm grabbing one of the pieces from the bodice to be able to have the same angle going on here. <laughs> could I measure this angle? Yes. Or I could just keep grabbing pieces from the front and drawing it on, on as I like. So I'm going to draw this angle right through like the point of the elbow dart, and then I'm just going to move the elbow dart a little bit so that it is along that angle and can be eliminated. Once again, is it perfect? If you were making it in like a nice expensive silk, would I recommend moving a mock-up? Yes. But I am just going to trust the process <laughs> for some reason. Once again, I'm using my ruler as a guide here just to make two inch wide stripes. I'm gonna start labeling the uh, pieces here. Again, this is like pointing towards the center of the sleeve. This is the underarm seam. I'm just trying to label the crap out of these because I get confused so easily. So I'm cutting off like basically, or like I'm moving the dart to by like closing it and then uh, moving that dart to this little area here so I can cut it off and not worry about the dart in the future. And I will add another seam along here or another like color block. I'm making it like weirdly curved so that the stripe still matches up. And I did a terrible job of making sure that the stripes of this match up on the underarm seam. That was the other thing that I forgot to do on this. Um, if you wanna see me do this properly, I mean, I still make a giant mistake in this video, but if you want to see me do this kind of thing 
really properly. Look at my Blade Runner dress here on the channel, um, because that dress, I really, really took my time with the math of it all, because I wanted it to look, or like I was copying the pattern of the color blocking from the Blade Runner suit from the first Blade Runner film. Um, so I was making a dress inspired directly by another piece, and so I was doing my best to try and copy it as best I could. So that one, I really took my time. This, because it's just one of my designs, you know, I'm just going in there willy-nilly. And now again, that everything is as I wish, I can start cutting it apart. And again, I'm going to have to add seam allowance to all these panels. So I'm going to grab some spare paper here and start adding on the seam allowance. I've just cut the sleeve apart down the center line, and I will start there adding seam allowance down the long bits and then down the short bits as I cut everything apart and add seam allowance everywhere it needs to go. Once again, the only mistake I made on the sleeve was not making sure the underarm seam matched up. If you look at my Blade Runner video, you'll see that the stripes have to be kind of a strange shape once you start getting around the curves of the body. So if you use straight lines like this, it doesn't actually end up matching up annoyingly. And on these sleeves, I decided to have them flare a little bit for the lower half of the sleeve. So you'll watch me add on that flare um, as I add on the seam allowance for this bottom part of the sleeve. And I'm going to leave a little bit of slit and I'm doing that in, if there's like four pieces across the bottom sleeve, there's like uh, the center, the two pieces that combine to create the center and then there's like a left side and a right side and I'm leaving that slit on the underside at the back of my arm. Um, you'll see what that looks like in the jacket in the end. Um, but it was just something I wanted to try for this because I knew after making the skirt, I knew this was going to be quite stiff and hold its shape quite a lot. And I thought the sleeves were going to be kind of bulky and Michelin Manny. And so I wanted to kind of lean into the stiffness of it and have them stick out at a bit of an angle in the back. So that was kind of how I decided to work with the textile, seeing as I had already kind of locked myself in. This really was like a, you know, creative kind of project that I then just like, I wasn't originally going to film. And then I, I mentioned on Instagram and everyone showed interest in it. So I was like, okay, I will film this project. But I'm really just kind of creatively going for it and seeing what happens. Hence why I'm doing a terrible job explaining. All right, so instead of adding a half inch seam allowance like that, I'm adding on a flare. So it's about five eighths of an inch flared and then I add the seam allowance on. Or maybe it's one inch flare. One inch flare, look, I wrote it there for me. Thank you, past self. So I added one inch of flare here and I'm going to leave this little bit open. So I made a mark for myself there so I could remember that, or hopefully I will. And I'll do the same to this other side here. One inch of flare along the seam. Let me put this puzzle back together here. Where do these pieces go? Oh my goodness. Yes, now that I've cut my sleeve into 8 billion pieces, <laughs> it used to look like this. I like to create a lot of work for myself. For someone who says that they're lazy, you can tell I'm lazy because I'm not double checking all these pattern pieces and I don't have a real method for how I got to them. <laughs> That's how we know I'm lazy. Not because I don't mind sewing a bunch of pieces together because that is fine. But I'll cut all of this out of the PK, and then the specialty pieces, the parts that I want to do the shiny fabric in, out of the shine, just like last week with the skirt. And again, just like I did with the skirt for this project, or this ensemble, I'm going to be layering all the shiny hollow pieces over PK pieces, and flatlining all of the holographic bits, all the shiny bits with the PK as well, which is why these projects turned out so dang thick or additionally, just because that PK is thick. I've done things like this with the sateen and it's much more user-friendly. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go ahead and layer all these pieces up, run them through the serger, just like I did for the skirt last week. And once again, I like laying everything out so I can see what the heck I'm doing and put the right pieces together at the right time. So this is the entire back laid out on the blue patterning table of doom, which really is doom worthy today with all this going on. So I can see what needs to be sewn to what first and try and not get turned around and sew these especially little chevron pieces wrong. <laughs> so I have them labeled all over the place and then I'm just sewing, you know, one seam at a time, trying not to get confused. Could you pin all this at once and take it over to the machine? Yes, but I feel like there's just more potential for mistakes to happen in that instance. And once again, because this has this uh, latex kind of coating film on this spandex, I'm pinning within the margins. So instead of pinning perpendicular, I'm pinning along the seam lines um, so that my pin marks in the latex are um, not seen. They're all like within the margin of the seam allowance. So I'm sewing this entire side back together first, all the color blocked seams first, then here is the waist seam, like so. 
you can do a little bit more, you know, batch processing than this, but really I think it helps to have it all laid out like a puzzle piece and go one at a time, honestly. Better that than having to un unpick anything, like I said last time. But this is the exact same process I used for creating both that gray and iridescent uh, spandex, uh, what did I call it? Realtor in Tomorrowland dress. And the same as I did for the different colors like ombre PK dress. Same steps, it's just you don't have to flatline weird materials, um, which is what I did with that. I did still do that for the Real Realtor in Tomorrowland dress. I'll do another dress like that soon, um, even though it takes forever um, with those thinner stripes. It's so pretty though, so I think it's worth it. And everyone has shown interest in that dress, so I feel uh, motivated to make another one. I wasn't really sure about these videos or these projects. Um, I was having a really good time doing them, and I had a really good time planning the shine video, filming it, editing it, um, everything to do with that video. I was having a great amount of fun, but I was nervous before I released it because I wasn't sure if, you know, it wasn't vintage enough um, for my channel. But you know what? You just got to go where your heart takes you in life. Um, and I think that shines through. So I've been really excited about working with weird materials. I've been really excited about doing this kind of color blocking stuff. And so this is what I've been doing kind of in my free time. And then I realized, you know, whatever I'm currently most passionate about is what I should be showing on the channel. So here we are with a couple of these color block projects. I'll have a couple more for you soon. Um, we'll have some vintage, like copying vintage styles thrown in here soon too, though. But just like last time with the skirt, as after I sew each seam together, I'm going to top stitch either side, both on the spandex and on the PK. Once again, this machine had no trouble trouble with this spandex. Um, you know, uh, occurrences with this kind of thing may vary. Like your machine might hate the coated spandex you get, and you might have to do the tissue paper technique or the scotch tape under the, you know, presser foot technique, but mine was doing just fine with this one, so I don't know what lucky magic I had going on there, but this one wasn't too sticky, luckily. And now that all the tiny stripes of the center back panels are sewn together, I can go ahead and sew the center back itself. So that's what I'm doing here. All the small seams first, and then the long seams. And again, with this PK and the flat lining of the other pieces with the PK, this is quite thick to get over some of these seams. All right, like so. And I can go ahead and, again, iron this as best I can, use that muslin as a press cloth over the plasticky bits. They feel like plastic. Again, have no idea what the coating on this spandex fabric is made out of, but I, we can all agree that spandex is plastic, so. Try not to melt anything. Of course, cotton um, requires and like can tolerate a hot iron, whereas thermoplastics, not so much. So using a press cloth to kind of find a happy medium there. Then I can go ahead and do top stitching down that long center back seam as well. Switching um, the, I guess you could see here, I'm, I'm moving the lever. Over the areas where I have to go over the latex, I'm switching the stitch length to be longer, but over the PK, I'm using 10 stitches per inch. And then over the latex sections, I'm using like a seven stitches per inch, um, just because it helps it to not get stuck, honestly. If I was trying to use a tiny stitch length on the latex, it might get stuck a little bit more. But now I can sew my side backs to my center back panel here now. I mean, there's like four panels, like main panels of the back. And then those panels are cut into small strips, you know, just to add complexity for myself. Some people do like Sudoku puzzles, Sudoku, Sudoku, whatever, puzzles. And this is my puzzle, I guess, or quilting. It's really feels similar to quilting to me, although I haven't done a ton of quilting. And this seam is a little bit curved. So I'm using my Taylor's ham. And again, that press cloth to press it open. Please don't worry about my hands. It's too cold in the basement, so <laughs> I'm warming them up. Luckily, this matched up quite well on this side. Once again, I need to do the same kind of a thing for the front. Once I have the front side panels and the front panels together, I need to sew this like princess seam with these weird fabrics. So this would be so much easier in a lighter weight fabric. And, but uh, here we are. So this is like princess seams extra because it's like heavy duty, weird. I feel like I'm making a leather jacket when I'm doing this. It kind of feels like a leather jacket. It has that kind of stiffness to it in the end. Um, but I'm pinning with the straighter piece on top of the curvier piece, which is how I like to do princess seams. If you've ever seen me do anything on the channel, you know this about me. But again, I'm trying to pin this as much as I, like, I usually use a lot of pins over the bust in a princess seam, but here I can't pin into the latex the way I would look normally. So it's extra challenging. This is how I ended up with so many bent weird pins after this project. I had to buy a new box of pins, but I can go ahead and sew that on the machine. Same way as everything else, really. 
So again, sewing the front panels together. Sewing the color blocking on the front, I skipped. However, you know how I, how I got to this point. At this point, especially if you've watched the skirt video as well. You've seen me sew a lot of these panels together. You get it. I sew the seam. I press it open. I top stitch either side. I keep going. Like so for the fronts. And again, I need to press this open and top stitch either side. Now this, I do need to cut this, uh, or clip this curve here. <laughs> my scissors are not really up to the task, especially these little baby ones, but there are uh, my little tiny, like, embroidery scissors I have laying around are actually the sharpest scissors in my studio right now because my other scissors still need to be sharpened. But I can go ahead and try and press this curved bust princess seam over my tailor's ham using some steam here and, I don't know, force of will. And that's like, the re I mean, these are so thick that they want to spring back open and they don't want to stay flatly pressed down, which is part of the reason I do top stitching on all this. It's because it will hold it, hold the seam pressed open on the inside. Tell you what, I'm excited at this point to make the video about the stretch, simple stretchy pencil skirts, because those <laughs> are so simple compared to this silly jacket idea. Okay, here I am. I have my two fronts. I have my full back. Let's start lining up that up at the side seam. I'm thinking, oh great, this is going to match up perfectly. All my stripes are going to match up. Let's go ahead and start matching the waist first. All right, we got the waist matched up. Why? Why is this longer? Why? Wait a minute. Uh, what's going on? This needs to go here. Did things stretch out in the sewing? Why is this so much longer than, than, than this? Something. Wait a minute. I can try and make it fit. Uh... Oh, but down here, wait a minute. Why is this literally like five-eighths of an inch longer? Um, what's going on there, kid? I want to look into that. Here I'm trying to make it work, trying to pin it, thinking, am I crazy? No. Over here. I added seam allowance at the waist in the side front, and I wasn't supposed to. And so now the front and the back are not the same length of the side seam, and nothing matches up like it's supposed to. Because this is supposed to be drafted. Like, if I was going to tape them together, I should have overlapped them as opposed to edge to edge. <sighs> Alas, the fatal mistake of the day. Dang it! This should have been overlapped. Alright, so what are we going to do about this? Well, <laughs> I am going to go ahead and sew this together as it is anyway, because I didn't have enough fabric to cut everything out again. So, I'm going to just shift everything down. So the waist seam on the front and the back at the side seam will not match up. Oh well. Um, so I'm going to match up the top side of this. And then I'm going to have this piece be longer at the side seam at the hem. And then I'm going to cut off the extra at the hem. And that's the plan. <laughs> Here I am going to match up the shoulder seams, which match perfectly. <sighs> Thank you. I guess I can't make every seam match perfectly, but this was particularly uh, egregious. Uh, to use large vocab. So you can see the waist seam is staggered like that, and I need to cut off this little bit along the front here because it's an inch longer than the back. Dang it! Let's go ahead and make the sleeve so I can forget about how angry I am about the side seams while I make the sleeve. You know, same process though. I have my flat lined hollow pieces. I have it all laid out like a puzzle, and I will start pinning together everything that needs to be sewn. Once again, sew each seam. Press each seam open and top stitch them. And you can see I'm batching this a little bit more, uh, although I am only working on one sleeve at a time. So, like, only I'll work on I'll make the entire left sleeve and then I'll make the entire right sleeve so that nothing gets mixed up. Of all the mistakes to make, I would not have thought it would be a drafting mistake. I would have thought I sewn the panels wrong. Who am I to make a pattern drafting mistake? Is that allowed? <sighs> all right, so here we are piecing the sleeves together. Again, I'm going to do like the entire left side of the sleeve and the entire right side of the sleeve and then sew the center last using a press cloth to press all this open. Once again, I will do the uh, top stitching as well. And then I went to go line up the underarm seam and thought, oh yeah, once again, I did not. Like, look how nice and pretty this is. I left the little slit here in the back where it flares a little bit. And then I go to match this. Oh, I didn't bother to match the stripes when I did the pattern drafting. That's correct. <clears throat> so screw up number two of this project. Anyway, I'm putting a line of gathering stitching along the top of my sleeve caps here so that I can gather it just a tiny bit. Uh, I'm not putting gathering in, I'm just putting this like mm, shaping into the sleeve cap here and then I can set my sleeves in to the jacket itself. <sighs> You'll notice that I didn't put any of the hollow stuff anywhere near this seam because this is an annoying seam. Setting a sleeve in is 
problematic enough without having to do it in the spandex. So mostly this does not interact with any of the hollow stuff, only in a few small areas um, so that I can pin this normally and not endure more frustration <laughs> because of the sleeves. But I'll go ahead and set these in over on the machine here. It's rare when setting the sleeve in is not the most frustrating thing about the project, but you know, every once in a while I'm bound to make a fatal mistake. It's just how sewing goes, especially with the volume of projects I make. I'm surprised I don't screw up on this level more often, honestly. I need to pay closer attention to what I'm doing. All right, so let's throw the uh, Taylor's ham into that shoulder and give it a lot of steam. It's going to hold its shape again quite well, even without a shoulder pad in here, because this fabric is thick. So, like so, same for the other side. And uh, then I can go ahead and figure out how to line these sleeves. So for the lining, I taped all the pieces back together. So for like the lining of most of this, I taped all the pieces back together, except along the princess lines for the front and back. But here on the sleeve, I still needed to have a few of these like color blocked ish seams to have that weird uh, seam for the slit in the back of the sleeve. And then here is the back. So I've used three pieces there. I just taped the skirt pieces back together, the tiny pebble in me skirt, and just taped everything back together. Everywhere I cut it apart and added seam allowance, I overlapped it and taped it back together in order to cut out lining for this. Because of course I didn't need to color block the lining. That would have been intense. And here I'm sewing the like peaked seam on the sleeve lining. Um, I'm just doing that all on the machine. Uh, sewing towards the point, leaving the needle down, cutting into the point so I can have free range of movement. I'm putting the presser foot back down and keep sewing so I can sew this little point here on the sleeve lining. And then I can go ahead and match up my underarm seam on the sleeve. And this is just lightweight um, black polyester lining that again is like uh, was unused and sent to me from like someone's stash, I suppose. All right, so now that I have my entire lining constructed, I'm going to bag line this entire jacket. So I'm lining up. I'm putting right sides together basically, lining everything up along the edges, and I will sew all the way around and bag line this jacket. I am going to top stitch this entire thing also. You could like understitch it or um, other methods of, I don't know, making the lining stay in place. But because the rest of the jacket has so much top stitching, I felt no problem top stitching the edge as well. And then mercifully, I'll be almost done. Because <laughs> at this point, I was ready to be done after I had made, made my mistakes. I, I always find those very demotivating, obviously. I was like, this thing better be cute anyway, otherwise I'm going to be mad. Sew that bag lining, basically sew the whole jacket to its lining, right sides together, leaving at least, you know, a hands width gap somewhere so I can turn it right side out. Then I'll be needing to clip all my corners and curves of this seam before I turn it right side out also. And clipping the subtle curve along the hem as well and turning this all right sides out. And once it is right sides out and ironed in place, I will pin along the edge again, just to make sure nothing moves on me. And I can go ahead and top stitch the entire edge of this buddy. And then I just need to fix the sleeve lining uh, to the sleeve. So I had left this slit in the sleeve lining and the sleeve in the same spot. And I can just go ahead and top stitch all of that because again, the rest of the project is top stitch, might as well do it. Um, and then I'm going to cover these shoulder pads real fast. I have these like rather curved, large shoulder pads that I picked up on Etsy. I actually picked up these to replace shoulder pads in a Thierry Mugler jacket in my collection um, that is missing its shoulder pads. I purchased a Thierry Mugler jacket, one of my 30th birthday presents to myself last year. I think the jacket is from the autumn winter uh, 1989 collection of Terry Mugler, not the couture, just the regular ready to wear. And uh, somewhere along the line, someone removed its shoulder pads. So I bought these giant shoulder pads to put into that Terry Mugler jacket, which I have not done yet, but I had it came with two pairs. So I decided to put the other set into this jacket since I had raised and peaked that uh, shoulder a tiny bit. But I'm just using bias squares of random Bemberg rayon lining fabric fitting those around the shoulder pad, and then I just surge that around the edge, the curved edge of the shoulder pad. And then here I will fit those into the shoulder, pin those in place, try on the jacket, see if I like them, and then just throw a couple of like stitches tacking them down inside. And then I would uh, go ahead and remove them anytime I needed to wash this jacket um, and then stitch them back in. You could of course stitch something like this in between the layers, uh, in between the jacket and the lining so that it was all interior. And then you wouldn't have the problem like I have now with that Mugler jacket where someone cut out the shoulder pads. If they were built in, then you couldn't do such a thing. Removing shoulder pads from like a random 80s jacket you find at the thrift store, 
fine. Removing shoulder pads from a Terry Mugler is like a fashion crime and should be avoided at all costs. And then finally, for the closure of this jacket, I just sewed on four skirt hooks in matching black, of course, down the center front overlap of this jacket. So hooks on one side, eyes on the other, sort of, just for an invisible sort of finish on this very modern jacket. And here is my finished color blocked holographic spandex and PK suit. Now this is rather, you know, like I said, the PK is not ex actually ideal for this kind of layering. It's just a little bit too thick for this kind of thing. So that's something I've learned. The PK, it's, I, it's a fabric I really like, especially for like a simple dress, but really the simpler, the better with this PK, which is what I have learned from doing these color block projects. And despite having messed up the side seam on this jacket, I still do really like the resulting suit. I'll be working on refining my princess seam version of my block and like making a kind of jacket block base, like a princess seam jacket block base to have around here. I might even cut it out of card and keep it at my side here. And of course, if I'm going to be working on that and refining my princess seam, I will do that on camera with all of you. I think I need to make a couple of rounds of muslins and really perfect it. Weirdly enough, darts, the fit is easier to get right than with the princess seam because the princess seam allows for a closer fit, which means you can like really get in there and kind of detail the fit and it's not really my strong suit, so we'll see how it goes. Thank you as always for watching today, and I'll be back here with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon, so I'll see you then. Bye.